How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in today's video we're going to be covering the Intel Arc Ultimate Optimization Guide. In this video we're going to be covering absolutely everything you need to know about getting the best FPS possible from your Intel Arc GPU. Whether it's an older, lower end GPU all the way up to the latest and greatest from Intel Arc, this video is going to be covering absolutely every single optimization, setting and feature you need to be making use of alongside unlocking some bonus features which aren't actually available with inside of the control panel but we can jump into the back end and actually enable them to vastly improve the experience in which you're having on your Intel Arc. GPU and tailor it to your gaming experience. By the end of this video, you'll be getting the best FPS possible from your GPU, reducing input latency, and setting up the GPU for the smoothest and best gameplay experience possible, regardless of what games you play or what it is that you do in your PC. As always, if you do enjoy this content, please do consider liking the video as it does help me out tremendously. And with all that said and done and out of the way, let's jump straight into the video after a quick message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, home or pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. So to start off with the optimizations, the first thing we're going to do is ensure that we have a clean GPU driver installation for our Arc GPU on our system. With this, we're going to be updating to the latest Arc GPU driver, which is incredibly important to ensure that you are getting the absolute best performance possible. And this is even more important on Intel GPUs than it is on AMD Radeon or Nvidia GPU. Be removing all of the old GPU drivers from our system to make sure that we don't have any conflicting files, cleaning up the system a little bit and ensuring that we are on the latest and greatest GPU driver available to us. You can choose just to update if you'd rather do that, but I would highly recommend doing the clean and update. So first of all, what you need to do is download the latest Intel Arc GPU graphics driver. There'll be a couple of links in the description down below, or you can do a quick Google search over to intel.com or intel.co.uk. Inside of here, you'll have the latest WHQL certified driver. Alternatively, you can navigate down to the beta section where you can download the experimental drivers, which I would recommend in many cases, as these will hold the latest fixes that may not be pushed to the full driver just yet. I'm going with the beta, select download, hit download now, set this to the desktop, hit save. We're then going to be utilizing DDU or Display Driver Uninstaller to clean all of the GPU drivers from our system, including our older Intel drivers, to ensure that we just have the one GPU driver installed to our system. This fix alone, even on AMD or Nvidia GPUs, can fix tons of problems and low performance issues. Do a quick Google search for Display Driver Uninstaller. You can either use the wagnardsoft.com official download, or you could utilize the guru3d.com mirror. Once downloaded, open up the zip. Drag the EXE for DDU onto the desktop, double click on the DDU.EXE, then select Extract. Safe mode will allow you to remove all of the graphics drivers from your system alongside the graphics driver you are currently using. If you don't reboot into safe mode, you more than likely won't be able to remove all of the graphics drivers you're currently using. Simply navigate down to the bottom left, hold Shift on your keyboard. Keep Shift held down, go down to the Windows button, right click on the power button, then select Restart. Once you boot it into this screen where it says choose an option, you can let go of Shift. Navigate over to Troubleshoot, go down to Advanced Options, Start Up Settings in the middle, then select Restart. We're going to be going with option number four, so press number four on the keyboard. Log into your system as you usually would. Double click on the DDU folder, right click on the DDU EXE, and run as admin. Once inside of here, we're then going to go over to the right hand side to select device type, select GPU. For those of you that are utilizing an Intel GPU and you've only ever had an Intel GPU installed to your system on this current version of Windows, make sure that Intel has been selected, then navigate up to the top left hand side to clean and restart. The process will then begin to remove the current GPU driver from the system, that your system will then automatically restart into Windows as it usually would. For those of you that have an Intel GPU installed right now, but you've also had AMD or Nvidia GPUs in the past installed on this current version of Windows, go down to the drop down menu. If you had an AMD Radeon GPU installed at some point, navigate over to clean and do not restart. Once that's completed, select no to the pop up. If you've also had an Nvidia GPU or you've only had an Nvidia GPU in the past, once again, repeat that step by clicking clean and do not restart. Once that's completed, navigate back down to the Intel GPU to remove this one last, and this time go to the top left to clean and restart. Like you did before, just simply boot in as usual. You'll more than likely find that your Windows graphics still won't be 100% and it might be running a different resolution. This is fine because you don't have your normal GPU driver installed yet. Head over to the desktop, find that GPU driver we downloaded earlier on, double click and begin to install this. Before we select reboot recommended, we're then going to be enabling the resizable bar option, which is listed here at the top. Resizable bar is essential 
optimal for Intel Arc GPUs to run at their optimal performance. In some games, this might make no difference at all, but in many games, this could have an uplift of up to 40 or even 50% performance, depending on the resolution and settings which you're running at. On screen now, you'll see a bunch of information regarding Ryzen CPUs and Intel CPUs and their respective chipsets in which should be supported for resizable bar. But if you can't find any information regarding resizable bar for your system, you've had a look around in the BIOS, you can't find anything online, your best bet is going to be Googling the hardware in which you have. So if you've had a look around to see if resizable bar is available to you, if the option is available, we're going to enable that now. Navigate down to reboot recommended. When we're restarting our system this time, we are going to be booting into the system BIOS. For this, what you're going to need to do is spam the delete key on your keyboard. On some PCs, this might be required to press F9 or maybe F2, but usually it's delete. Every BIOS is going to look different depending if you're on an MSI, Asus, Gigabyte motherboard, and even depending on how old or new your BIOS is, it can look slightly different. The main thing we need to find is the classic or advanced mode. On this Gigabyte motherboard, it's called classic, and I can enter it by going up to the F2 option here at the top or pressing F2. In this Gigabyte BIOS, I actually need to navigate up to the peripherals tab towards the top. Inside of here, I then have the option for above 4G decoding. You need to make sure that this option has been enabled. Now on some newer Gigabyte BIOSes, you'll also have another 4G option with inside of here, which appears. You need to have both 4G options enabled. Once you enable both 4G options, you'll then see resizable bar or bar become available underneath this. Make sure that this has been turned off of disabled and either set to enabled or auto. Once that's been set up, go to the top right of your BIOS, then hit save and exit. Quickly check to see if it's actually running by right clicking on the desktop, navigating down to show more options and opening the Intel Arc control panel. Navigate to the top left hand side to the small settings cog, then navigate down to system info in the middle. On the right hand side, you'll see resizable bar and that should then be enabled. Next up, we're going to jump into some very basic Windows optimizations and settings just to make sure that everything is set up properly with inside of Windows. Navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button, start by typing game space mode. At the top, ensure that game mode has been enabled. Navigate down to graphics. Inside of this section, click change default graphics settings and make sure that the option for optimizations for windowed games has been enabled at the top. You can choose to enable auto HDR if you do have a HDR display. That's completely personal preference. We won't be covering HDR with inside of this video. It's also worth noting that you can come back to the graphics panel here at the top where you can then actually navigate down and select browse and start selecting some of your favorite game application exe. When you add these in, you can click on the drop down menu, select the option setting, where you'll then be able to manually select to use your Intel Arc GPU on your system to ensure that every single game you play is actually using the GPU you have installed. So for Apex Legends, I'm going to select high performance, which is my Intel Arc A750. You can also set up don't use auto HDR and don't use optimization for windowed games on a per game basis in here. Select save once you've adjusted your settings and we can then go ahead and exit out. Next up, we're going to be enabling an incredibly important optimization, which is still applicable at the time of recording this video. What we're going to do is actually enable the ability to control the fan speed of your Intel Arc GPU, whether you want to go with a fixed manual fan speed where you can set the slider from zero all the way up to 100%, or you can actually set a custom fan curve right in the Intel Arc control panel. Navigate to the performance tab on the left hand side, then navigate over to performance tuning and select configure. On the right hand side, if you do not see this option for fan speed control where you have the drop down menu, then we can enable this quickly and easily. First of all, go ahead and exit out of the Arc control panel. Now we need to edit one of the files within inside of the Intel Arc control panel, which will actually unlock this feature, which is embedded into the control panel already. It's just not enabled by default. So for this, I would highly recommend utilizing Notepad++ to edit the file. You could potentially get away with using normal Notepad but you will have to run that as an admin. Find a reputable download source. I like to use the TechSpot source, but you can use any that you wish to. Select OK, Next, Agree, and install this to your machine. Navigate down to the bottom to your file explorer. Once inside of here, we're then going to go over to the left-hand side to this PC. Open up local disk C drive, then scroll down to program file. We're not going to be utilizing x86, just the normal program files folder. Scroll down to the Intel folder, inside of Intel, Intel Arc Control, Resource, JS, Pages, performance. If you are lost at any point, just make sure that your directory at the top matches mine and you're then in the correct location. Navigate down to the performance underscore tuning.js, right click on this file, navigate down to show more options and select edit with notepad plus plus. Once the file opens up, what we need to do is scroll down towards the middle. You can simply press Control and F on your keyboard to search, then select find next. Exit out of that, you should then be brought to this line of text. The main header should be titled performance settings fan mode select container. All you need to do is see where it's says visible active performance adapter click at the end of this row after the comma press enter you're then simply going to type in visible colon space true comma so it looks just like this once you've done this go to the top left hand side click the save icon you'll more than likely be notified that notepad plus plus will need to be run in administrative mode select yes to this 
then select yes once again. Notepad++ will then open up with the edit then saved. Go to the top left just to save this once again, then exit out. Right click on the arc control panel and exit out of this so we can reboot into it. Go ahead and right click on the desktop, show more options, into arc control panel, yes. This time navigate over to the performance tab on the left hand side, go to performance tuning, configure, then on the right hand side you should now be able to see the fan control selector. What we can then do is set this to automatic which it is set to by default. You can go to a fixed fan target where you can take manual control as to what you want the GPU fans to be doing, or my favourite option, going with a manual fan curve. As you can see the default fan curve for the GPU really isn't that aggressive. Even when it gets up to here towards 75 degrees you're only utilising about 75% of the fan speed. On the left hand side you can see the speed at which the fans are going to be running at and on the bottom you can see the temperature in which the speed will be achieved at. So at this middle point we're utilising 55% of our GPU fan speed at roughly 60 to 70 degrees. For me I want to set this much more aggressively at this point so what I'm going to do is just simply drag this up towards the top. You might not want to set your fan speed as aggressive as this but for me if my GPU is starting to get towards 50 to 60 degrees I'm going to be in a game or doing something demanding and I would rather that the GPU stays cooler and slightly louder giving me better performance when I'm in games where it really matters. Go to the bottom right hand side then select apply and your GPU fan curve will then be applied. With our fan speed then selected we can then move over to performance tuning for the Intel Arc GPU. I would highly recommend jumping into this panel as there is so much power available at your fingertips or fine tuning your GPU whether you want it to use less power and be cooler or if you want to unlock extra headroom in the GPU for better performance. Now this isn't going to be for everyone and I'm not going to be jumping into an in-depth overclocking guide. First of all, number one, for those of you looking for the best performance possible and you've set your manual fan curve quite aggressive so the GPU should now be slightly cooler, in most cases I would highly recommend utilising a higher GPU power limit. In my case I'm going to be allowing the GPU to stretch its legs completely at the full 228 watt. Depending on the GPU in which you're using you may be able to set this higher or slightly lower where the GPU can then scale its core clock higher allowing for better performance with inside of games. And now that we've set the GPU fan curve higher our GPU really shouldn't be running any hotter. With that set go down to apply but for those of you looking to get the best gains possible out of the performance tuning panel there are two more options available to us which are absolutely phenomenal in terms of increasing performance with inside of game. They are the GPU voltage offset and the GPU performance boost. If you're increasing the GPU voltage offset this could decrease the lifespan of your GPU as more voltage will equal more heat, more strain and potentially less life of the GPU. So if you are going to adjust the GPU voltage you are doing so at your own risk. Some phenomenal settings which have been working really well for me so far is to apply plus 50 millivolts in the GPU voltage offset. Applying this alone with no performance boost I've noticed it's actually allowing the GPU to run at its boost clock for longer and boosting further. With that applied I also like to set the GPU performance boost up to 15. Those are very modest settings when you can see how much you can actually push these dials up. But by all means in your own time you can play around with those if you know what you're doing and potentially squeeze out even more performance. One thing I would highly recommend avoiding at this point is to apply the system settings on boot. Leave this turned off until you are 100% sure at all times that your GPU is 100% stable. In the left hand side we can actually navigate over to the in-game overlay, select the settings cog and you can select what you would like to monitor if anything with inside of the in-game overlay. For me personally I like to have all of the default options set up. You can then navigate to the bottom left and turn the in-game overlay on. This will show up on the desktop and with inside of games as well but it's super handy to have this option available to you especially when you're initially doing some GPU tuning as it allows you to monitor everything. You can see the current GPU core clock, the current temperature, how much power the GPU is utilizing to ensure that your GPU is staying nice and cool allowing it to give you the best performance possible. Next up is one of the most important if not the most important optimization you can apply on a per game basis where it's available. For this step we're going to be looking at the rendering APIs the games are using in which you are playing such as DirectX 9, DirectX 11, DirectX 12 and Vulkan. Thankfully in the last few years we're getting tons of titles which have multiple rendering APIs available to you so you can dial in which one works best for your system. If you're not too educated on Intel Arc GPUs throughout their development cycle and what they're tailored towards and what they work best on, Intel Arc GPUs work best on modern rendering APIs such as DirectX 12 and Vulkan. Up until a few months ago they really fell short on DirectX 9 titles as the DirectX 9 performance just wasn't there as it was running a really poor emulation layer to run DirectX 9 titles. Thankfully they seem to have implemented a DirectX 9 to Vulkan translation layer instead in the recent driver updates a few months ago which is where you would have seen all of those fancy graphs with major performance uplift for Arc GPUs as it will now automatically be utilizing the Vulkan layer or DirectX 12 layer to run the DirectX 9 titles. So thankfully the worst performance issues with Intel Arc GPUs have been fixed automatically and you won't have to do anything. But for those of you playing modern titles such as Counter-Strike 2 when it comes out, Apex Legends, Dying Light 2, Borderlands 3, you definitely owe it to yourself to jump into the in-game settings or Google around to see if your game supports alternative applications or launch options in which you can utilize 
to use alternative rendering methods such as Vulkan or DirectX 12. For this example, we have Apex Legends. Apex Legends recently actually got a DirectX 12 beta, which you can enable by simply heading over to Apex Legends in Steam or the EA Play app, navigating down to Properties. Then all you need to do is copy the launch option link down below, paste this into your launch options for Apex Legends. Once you boot the game, you'll then be compiling shaders for a little while as you have changed the render in which you're using. Once that's completed, you'll then see absolutely astronomical performance improvements, even on top of your already optimized Intel Arc GPU driver and control panel settings, which we just dialed in. For Counter-Strike 2, it's natively shipping with DirectX 11 instead of DirectX 9, which CSGO is using. But if you go into the launch options and set dash Vulkan with inside of there, you can actually make use of the Vulkan API built into the game. If you see games which have multiple different renderers and you're not sure what to use, if you are utilizing an Intel Arc GPU, for the most part, I would highly recommend trying out DirectX 12 first. The second best API is going to be Vulkan. Third best is going to be DirectX 11, followed by DirectX 9. So if you can get DirectX 12 or Vulkan, always choose that option over anything else. With any and all rendering APIs then dialed in, we can now jump into some basic in-game settings and presets I would highly recommend that you use on practically all games you play. I would highly recommend that you jump into the graphics settings and see if you have options such as XESS upscaling, FSR upscaling, or TSR upscaling. You'll find different options through different games, as some games won't support XESS or FSR, but I would highly recommend utilizing these options where available. Such as in Fortnite here, you see the TSR option built into Unreal Engine 5, which you can make use of, and I'd highly recommend at least trying out the quality setting on most games, regardless of the resolution in which you're running at. If it still looks great, bump this down to balanced. The lower you can get this option and still be happy with it visually, the better the FPS you're going to be getting and the less strain you're going to be putting on the GPU, improving your rendering latency. The latest updates to Intel's own XESS and AMD's FSR are absolutely phenomenal and both are supported on your GPU in any games where they're available. As for overall in-game settings, again, as these GPUs are phenomenal value with inside of the medium to high-end market, in my personal recommendation for those of you playing at 1080p, 1440p, or potentially even 4K, I would highly recommend just setting most of the games you play in the future to the medium or the high preset. Avoid Ultra or the highest settings preset on any games you play. These settings usually tank FPS, you're getting very little visual bump for the FPS in which you are losing, and it just makes the GPU run incredibly inefficiently. Especially for those of you playing at 1440p, I would highly recommend getting used to setting your graphics presets with inside of most games you play to medium at the highest. As having a high frame rate, high resolution gameplay experience is, in my opinion, the best way to experience PC gaming, rather than having a choppy, stuttery mess with lower FPS with just a small bit of extra eye candy costing all of that extra performance. Next up are very basic settings for the Intel Arc control panel. Navigate to the top left hand side to this settings call. Start with app preferences. On the right hand side, go to general. Low impact mode is definitely recommended. It will make the program have an ever so smaller footprint on system resources. I would also recommend turning off allow data collection. Window size, I would leave at the default setting, which is desktop and overlay. And if you would like to toggle between the two modes, you can do so with these arrows in the top right hand side. Customize widgets, we're going to be skipping for this video, but you can set that up in your own time. Next up, navigate over to notifications. Turn any and all of these on or off, depending on your personal preferences. Then take yourself over to the left hand side to global game settings. Inside of here, we can set some very basic system wide game settings, which are applied to every single game you boot in the future. First up is the option to opt into the driver boost technology. You can see the description of it there. I personally turn this off. Game compatibility. If you're running into any particular game, which is giving you performance headaches, very low performance, massive stutters, and it just doesn't seem like it's performing right. I would definitely recommend giving this a try by enabling this and see how you get on. Under frame delivery, you'll have tearing mitigation modes. My personal recommendation for this setting would be to leave it on application choice, unless you are utilizing VRR or variable refresh rate with a funky setup where you're going to be capping your FPS. In that scenario, I would recommend turning VSync on. Heading over to post processing. Starting off with your sharpen filter. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It will apply a sharpen filter to any and all games. Retro scaling type, where we have disabled, scaled width, nearest neighbor, or fixed width, integer scaling. To turn this into really basic terms, setting this to disabled will mean that whatever resolution you apply in your games will be applied at its native scale to your monitor. So if you have a 1440p monitor, you set your game to 1080p, you're going to be playing in a 1080p window with black bars. If you set this to scaled width, you will have full scaling and stretching regardless of which resolution you're using. You can stretch 4x3 with this, you can set any resolution, and it will always take up the full size of your monitor. But my favorite option, especially for those of you utilizing 4K or 1440p monitors, would be to set fixed width integer scaling. This will mean that any resolution which can be evenly divided into your resolution, you'll see a list of which on screen now, will be one to one pixel scaled onto your screen, giving you incredibly sharp and clear results when utilizing lower resolutions. Next up on the left hand side, we then have the studio tab. For those of you that are more interested in capturing gameplay, such as small highlights or just small clips whenever you wish to, these are the settings in which I 
would highly recommend. Last but not least, with inside of the basic settings, head over to the games tab. We can then set up our per game settings. At the bottom, you then need to ensure that gaming profiles has been switched to off. We can then adjust our frame delivery option if you wish to set a specific one for a specific game for any reason. Next up, and most importantly, heading over to post processing. This is where you can turn on the sharpen filter and set this to any value for each and every game individually. I can have this set to 25 on Fortnite, 30 on Modern Warfare 2, 0 on other games. It's fantastic to utilize this. And that's it for the very basic Intel Arc control settings. To go, one last thing I would highly recommend looking into to increase the efficiency of your GPU now that everything is dialed in is to potentially look into capping your in-game FPS. In-game FPS caps for the most part are absolutely phenomenal, especially if you're someone that's playing more single player titles and you're not too bothered about getting the absolute highest FPS and you don't really play games like CSGO or games where you're getting 500 plus frames most of the time. If you're looking for a fantastic modern balanced gaming experience, capping your FPS is a phenomenal way to increase overall smoothness of the gameplay experience in which you're receiving and alleviating some of that extra strain off of your GPU by not rendering unnecessary frames if you're not super conscious about render latency. You're much better off utilizing applications such as RTSS or Revitune's statistics server, which you can find via a quick Google search. Once it's installed to your system, all you then simply need to do is once it's running, set the FPS cap at the top. Alternatively, when you have one of your games running in the background, hold down control, press the add button, add the individual game exe to the application, click the game exe itself, and set your FPS cap on a per game basis. This way you can add tons of games with inside of here, have different FPS caps for each, and it's a fantastic and easy way to manage all of this, and leaves you with incredibly stable and smooth frame time. When it comes to VRR or variable refresh rate technology for the Intel Arc GPUs, if you're looking to make use of this, all you need to do is go over to your monitor or TV. First of all, enter inside of the monitor or TV's manual settings, usually utilizing the buttons on the back, bottom, or on a remote. But you'll need to go inside of the options and find either adaptive sync, variable sync, variable refresh rate, G-sync, or free sync modes. If you find any of these, make sure that they are enabled. You may find that your display will flicker a few times once this is set up. Once VRR or variable refresh rate has been enabled on the monitor, simply navigate down to the bottom left-hand side in Windows, type GPU space settings. Head over to the default graphics panel option found here. Once inside of here, you'll then find the option for variable refresh rate inside of Windows. Make sure that this has been enabled and you're then good to go with VRR set up. Get the best results out of this, just like if you're utilizing AMD FreeSync or NVIDIA G-Sync, I would highly recommend utilizing an FPS cap, three FPS lower than your monitor's refresh rate. For this, I would definitely make use of the RTSS or Revit Tuner Statistics Server software. Simply set an FPS cap in this window here, three FPS lower than your monitor's refresh rate. So if you're on a 144 hertz monitor, cap your FPS to 141. If you're on a 240 hertz, go with 237, and just simply adjust that number if you're on a higher or lower refresh rate monitor. Make sure that VSync has been enabled inside of the Intel Arc control panel utilizing this setting. You then need to make sure that VSync has been disabled in any and all games and the in-game settings menu for your game in the future. Once all of that's been set up and dialed in with all of those settings, all of your games will feel absolutely phenomenal, smooth, silky, and play beautifully. And there you guys have it. That is the Intel Arc Ultimate Control Panel Guide. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to leave a like. If you are super serious about getting the best FPS possible out of your machine and optimizing it further, I would highly recommend clicking on one of the videos on screen now, and I'll see you guys over there.